Hello and a warm welcome to Federal's special program, Capital Beat. National election of India, that is the Lok Sabha election, has started today with the first phase kicking off. Uh, 102 seats, 21 states and union territories. And uh, the voter turnout, it seems, has been maximum in Tripura so far. But uh, unfortunately, there have been uh, reports of incidents of intimidation and violence being reported from Manipur, from West Bengal. Uh, just a short while back, I was listening to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, who was uh, speaking in Amroha. And uh, then he said that uh, uh, he made references of how Rahul Gandhi has dismissed his underwater prayers in Dwarka. He also urged the voters to come out in record numbers and vote. Uh, there has been a statement from uh, Malikarjun Kharge where he says that uh, this election is all about saving the democracy and saving the constitution. Uh, there are also incidents of uh, boycott in several villages uh, in Pilibhit. There are reports of boycott from Tamil Nadu as well on some local issues that their basic facilities, their basic demands have not been met. So the big question now is with the first phase it's starting, what are the big issues? Have the political parties grabbed onto the big narrative of 2024? Or is it just going to be how and the manner in which uh, BJP has shown a mirror for 2047 versus the democracy, saving the democracy and saving the constitution. Uh, I'll uh, begin the discussion and joining me now is, is a very special panel from different parts of the country today. Uh, Samir Purkasta, senior journalist with the federal, joins us from West Bengal. Thank you so much uh, uh, for joining. We have Puneet uh, Nicholas Yadav, senior journalist again with the, with the federal. Thank you so much, uh, Puneet. We have... Uh, uh, S. Srinivasan, who is the editor-in-chief of The Federal. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. T.K. Rajalakshmi, uh, senior deputy editor from The Frontline, joins us. Thank you so much. And Anil Sharma, senior journalist and political commentator from Rajasthan, also joins uh, uh, on the program. Thank you so much. And welcome all of you on, on a day when uh, the first phase of uh, voting has kick-started. And I'd like to begin with you, Srinisa. You would set the, the agenda and the tone of the discussion as well. But... Uh, what does it look like with the first phase almost now coming to an end it's already five so of course uh, the voting comes to an end but uh, what has been the big narrative so far according to you uh, has it been price rise inflation has it been about modi or has it been about the constitution and saving the democracy as what india alliance claims that that is the big talking point of this election yeah so um you know there's nothing new I'm going to say. Everybody knows that this is a, one of the most elections India ever fought. I would say rather the most important election. Of course, journalists may be accused of saying, using the same uh, sentence before every election. But for many reasons, I think this is the most, most important. At least in my lifetime, I see it an extremely uh, 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 significant elections. And why it's significant, everybody knows. Because it could determine the... Uh, the fundamental way we practice our democracy. You know, around the world, you see how what is happening. You have the democracies, uh, you know, the largest, uh, I think there are 15 or 16 countries in the world which has no democracy at all. There's no democratic traditions. And you have uh, Russia, which is, a, a you know, a major power, but you can hardly say there is a democracy there. It's somehow you, they get elected. Uh, and form a new government. And you have uh, China, which is uh, most populous as of now. Soon we will overtake. Democracy is nowhere near there. But we uh, took pride in the fact that we are the not just the, uh, the largest uh, democracy, but also uh, a vibrant practicing democracy. So I'm um, in, in that sense, I think it's a very, very crucial uh, election because on the one hand, uh, you know, the political parties can't be more divided than what they are right now, the way you see nationally. And there are two alliances. There is an NDA alliance, which is seeking for a third term headed by uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And then second, you have on the opposing side is uh, India alliance, which is uh, trying to put together a, a modicum of fight, you know. So the alliance itself hasn't fully uh, formed in the sense uh, one would have expected as it began uh, its journey towards the election, as the election journey began. But yet you have a loose uh, formation existing in states. And uh, 
so so there are many questions here the one of the biggest questions which is being raised at least from this this part of india which is southern part of india is about the question of federalism um you know after all india the constitution defines as, as a union of uh, uh, states where each individual state has its own role to play uh, so th that's an important issue it may not be very explicit in 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 terms of uh, uh, politicians raising the demand but if you look at the way they articulating in different ways for instance southern india has been saying that you know if there is a uh, one rupee which uh, they uh, uh, you know if they send as a tax they only get a fraction of that in return so i think it's it's one way of expressing uh, their um, you know issue on on self governance issues that they don't have enough uh, revenue raising capability but then you have the other one is of course uh, north india is embroiled completely in a different kind of uh, narrative where uh, you know the uh, ram temple had become a very important issue and then the overarching uh, issue of hindutva so these are big narratives which has been going on for some time but are they really the issues in this current election uh, i i mean i mean no way to point out one single factor as an election issue and never in the election there is never one single issue uh, but you still get an idea of where is it heading to which direction it is heading but what i feel is that um uh, if at all there is anything uh, uh, beneath the surface which is happening at least i haven't traveled enough to say uh, to track those who actually I went around uh, countryside maybe they'll be able to throw much more light but i certainly feel in in terms of importance it's one of the most important elections now uh, what you see today as uh, it's also being uh, held at a time when it's intense heat um literally the temperature is soaring around the uh, country uh in tamil nadu at least in one place salem i won't say it's directly related it's a question mark whether they died because of uh, uh, uh sunstroke or any such thing but there are two voters who came up to up to the polling booth and they simply collapsed uh, one person was 79 year old and the other lady was 70 i think another person was 71 year old to so two people of course uh, uh, you you can't uh, authoritatively say they died because of heat stroke uh, but certainly the the heat has taken its toll so it was expected that whether um, the poll percentage would be lower than the previous year but surprisingly uh, in tamil nadu the poll percentage has been good so far i think they will cross the last year last year, 2019 73% 74% mark Uh, as reports are coming in from other parts of the country uh, there have been violence in the northeast i'm sure uh, samir will be able to throw more light especially in nagaland um, and then uh, manipur a very important uh, uh, issue surprisingly i think there is a good uh, polling in uh, bastar which recently saw a, a, you know mass a massacre kind of a thing where uh, most uh, uh, next nexus were hit and um uh, then uh, other parts i'm sure our, our colleagues will throw more light but i i feel that uh, the vote percentage uh, initially i felt that whether it will be a low turnout election in some parts of the north probably it is still a low turnout but at least uh, the only state all the 39 constituencies plus one puducherry 40 constituencies parliament constituency which went for the election is a large state among large state first is tamil nadu and uh, it seems that the vote percentage here should be fine uh, and this state is crucial because out of the 120 seats in this region last time uh, bjp had won uh, 30 and uh, 131 i think uh, out of that 120 uh, so they they expect to cross that 30 as of now uh it looks a bit difficult that's all i would say i mean yeah. i'll share more information with you as we go along yeah 
All right. So let me let me start with Rajasthan and then I'll come because Ar Anil uh, has to go on some other channel. So I'll come to Anil first and starting with Rajasthan. Uh, what is the scenario there, Anil, since morning? Uh, uh, and uh, there were reports that apparently some BJP cadres have withdrawn themselves completely as what the reports I heard. So what is the real picture of what you are witnessing in Rajasthan since morning? Uh, Niluji, look, uh, up to 3, until 3 or uh, 3 p.m., the voting percentage was 41.51% in Rajasthan, which I think was a bit low, but it will pick up because Rajasthan right now, where I'm sitting in my house, you know, it has to, uh, it, it is uh, very hot, you know, it's very hot here. So people must be, you know, planning to go by 5 or 6, I think so. But anyway, looking at this in Rajasthan, what uh, Sriji said, I'll, I'll come to the point. Major issues, if you look at it, consolidation of Jat votes is one of the major issues. I'll not say that all the Jats are voting for Congress, but majority of them has shifted to the, uh, the India Alliance. And the reason behind this are three mainly. One is cutting of Rahul Kaswa's ticket from BJP cut his ticket. He was a sitting MP from Churu and Congress offered him a ticket. So, and second, Govind Singh Dotasara, who is Rajasthan's uh, PCC chief is also a Jat. Jats consider, you know, at least one of our person is in a topmost position in Congress. So I'm seeing consolidation of vote plus, you know, the farmers' agitation, the uh, women wrestlers issue. These issues are there in Rajasthan, but I'll take Rahul Kaswa's issue as the turning point for India Alliance in Rajasthan. A turning point for sure, as we term in. Uh, <laughs> In, does that mean that the victory which uh, BJP got in the Vidhan Sabha elections, uh, have they be, not been able to carry that momentum forward for the Lok Sabha elections? Do you see a lessening of uh, of, of, of that uh, momentum? Just look at it. Now, now I'll come to the calculation, the statistics part, what you've asked me. When the uh, Vidhan Sabha elections were held in December 2023, the, if you translate them into Lok Sabha polls, BJP gets 14 seats and Congress gets 11 seats. Okay. So my take is not 11 seats for the Congress. I'll be very frank. If it happens, then there is an undercurrent somewhere. I'll, I'll not deny it. But I'm looking at Congress or India Alliance getting between 5 to 7. Not lesser than 3. So my number goes from 3 to 7. If they get more than that, it will surprise me. It will surprise me for, uh, for sure. But okay. they are performing better because even if they get two seats, that will be 200% jump for them. Because they got zero in 2014, they got zero in 2019. So it's going to be 200% jump. They can talk about it. If we have got two seats, 200 jump in my. But it is not going to be uh, 20, uh, 25 zeros this time, for sure. Okay. Well, one uh, quick answer, and then I'll go to Javed. So is it the absence of the Vasundara factor, which is, which is somewhere... Uh, you know, working against BJP because everybody in 2019 was saying that BJP had won 25 seats because of the pan Rajasthan presence of uh, Vasundra. So, is that factor completely missing this time? It is, it is for sure, because Vasundra calls herself to be a Jat ki Bahu and Gujar ki Saas hmm. and Kshatriya. So, she was targeting three communities in all, you know, and that made a difference. That is a big difference. And that is why when Jats look at it, they don't find any important leader in BJP. That is why consolidation we are seeing of Jats. Plus, one more thing I'll add before I finish it. SCSTs, there is a consolidation because they think if Modi wins, he's going to scrap the constitution and bring a new one. And we'll, be, we'll not get the, uh, what you call the... Uh, Benefits of reservation. Yeah, reservation. Sorry, the reservation. So that has become a major issue. Hmm. These two things have become a major issue. Plus, you have got nine percent of Muslim population. Right. That's so an important. That point. makes a difference in yeah. Right. All right. So on this particular point, Javed, let me just uh, point this out. What what Anil was saying, and uh, repeatedly, Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, various leaders of India Alliance have been saying, and also in the Ramlila Maidan rally, which happened that Sunday. Uh, about three weeks ago, uh, they also repeatedly said that if Modi returns to power, there will be no constitution, uh, there will be no reservation, and they they gave several analogies. Now, is constitution saving the constitution 
becoming a very big electoral issue on the ground, which probably maybe the urban areas are not taking it seriously. But as what Anil pointed out, that with the SCs and the STs in the OBCs, it's becoming a big issue. So has this issue really percolated down to the village level as well? What is your feeling? I mean, my reaction is mixed. It has, but not in the manner. My own belief is that this election is bereft of and one big national issue on either side. There is so far, and these this is the first day, this is, these are early days, so to form a, a complete opinion on this election is would be erroneous, but my view is, prima facie, there, there is an absence of one overarching national issue, either on the side of the government or, for that matter, the opposition. This also, there is little evidence to suggest that there is a wave. 2014, there was a wave for change for Modi, 2019 also. Har Har Modi, Ghar Ghar Modi. So far, there is little evidence of it. There is also, so far, again, I keep underlining so far, there is also little evidence of a groundswell on, on the Mandir issue. The Mandir issue is done, completed, dusted. Yes, thank you. But beyond that, it is not playing out. Maybe once once the election scene shifts to the Hindi heartland, maybe it will come to the fore. There are multiple of issues that are playing out against the government. There's joblessness, inflation, there, there is uh, you know, price rise, there is Agnivir, there is Kisan distress, all that. The trick which the opposition seems to have missed at the moment is, and that's when I come to this issue of, of uh, you know, changing the constitution is you have to present this present issues in a way that the people can relate to. Kharge and these people have now appeared to have caught on to the fact and they're saying that if they come, they will not just they will change the constitution, do away with the reservation. So people, beneficiaries of reservation, then relate to it. Otherwise, you know, this dictatorship and federalism and and all, all the center state relationship doesn't really appeal to people. In the absence of a national issue, it's local issues, it's bread and butter issues. And perhaps this could, in the ultimate analysis, work in favor of the opposition. One is also, I don't know whether by accident or by design, I believe it's largely by accident, the, the absence of a, of a prime ministerial candidate from the opposition side is also working to their advantage. Unwittingly, but it's working to their advantage because there is no comparison. Now, Modi, you cannot, like the last time, it was Modi versus Rahul. Now, now it's not so much the case. So therefore, that is also working to the opposition's advantage. But then, like I said, these are early days. There is no evidence of a wave just as yet. But who knows? Something out of the ordinary may happen. Hmm. If, you, all you things have... if, if, if all things remain the same, I have been on a couple of channels. I've also been speaking to two friends uh, in the ruling camp, and they seem to be a bit disturbed, a bit concerned, all because of the voting uh, turnout. Because Tamil Nadu, large voting turnout doesn't work out work in their favor, is what they feel. They are also concerned that, that they believe that there, because there is no wave, therefore people are, uh, people are not turning out. And if people are not turning out in large numbers, they are complacent that, oh, teens or satins or modi to ira, this could ultimately, this could ultimately mar their chances, mar their chances of getting 350 or 370 or 400. I'm not saying that they will end up losing the election, but this could prove to be a damn. But Javid, I had a question. Uh, like you, you were saying that there is no wave which is uh, very evident this time in 2024. So does it mean that, you know, this Modi factor or uh, we, we call it Modi magic or the Modi charisma, has it weaned away or has it chipped away a little uh, as compared to 2019 or 2014? Look, too much of a good thing even leads to routine, routinization. Perhaps Mr. Modi is, is a victim of that. Every time you open, the, uh, you open a television set, you open the newspapers, you switch on the radio in your car, it's just Modi, Modi, and more Modi. You know, uh, after my uh, after my bypass, I have been advised a high protein diet, and so every day I have to eat chicken. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sorry, I'm giving you a personal analogy, 
I'm sick and tired of it. It's coming out of my ears. But the fact is, so something similar is happening. That, you know, that euphoria that you saw, that madness that we saw on the streets for Modi, that seems to be missing so far. Who knows? The magic may, you know, he may make the souffle rise once again. Javed, unknowingly, you have uh, displayed your choices before Modi today on this show that you would want to eat chicken, whether you want it or not, but you will eat chicken. But anyways, that, that was on the lighter note. But let me let me uh, now come to Samir, uh, because the picture in West Bengal, West Bengal, of course, is one of those uh, politically hot button states right now. And with uh, several incidents of violence uh, being reported from Pooj Bihar, how was it in the morning and how did this violence start? And of course, with... Uh, Mamta Banerjee claiming yesterday that the Ram Navmi violence was also instigated by BJP. So what does what does the picture look like uh, in, in West Bengal right now? See, actually, it started from last night in Koch Bihar uh, when uh, TMC office was attacked by BJP. Actually, Koch Bihar is the you know home turf of um, uh, two muscle men of Bengal politics. One is uh, Nishit Pramanik, uh, the Indian Minister of State for Home, and another is uh, West Bengal, um, this North uh, North Bengal Development Minister Udayan Goho. So they have uh, you know track records of uh, violence and all these things. So this is a turf war between Udayan Goho and uh, Nishit Pramanik. But um, in, if you compare with other elections in the past, uh, elections in the recent past, then this time uh, the good sign is that the violence is comparatively less. And uh, <clears throat> Governor C. V. Ananda Bose, he met the press in the afternoon. He also um, admitted that this time violence was much less. Uh, <clears throat> so this is one positive. And uh, this could be, be, be because you know, uh, like um, if, um, there is uh, some kind of uh, uh, in uh, North, North Bengal, which is a BJP stronghold, and uh, so um, uh, there there could be uh, like uh, no st uh, one reason could be there is no stiff competition. So that could be one reason why the violence is very less this time. And this, uh, all these three, uh, in all these three constituencies, BJP secured more than 50% vote uh, in 2019. So um, that could be one of the reasons. And But uh, by and large, this time we are seeing a trend that violence is less because of uh, also could be because of, uh, you know, a de high deployment of security personnel in Coach Bihar alone, 120, one, um, yeah, 120 companies of uh, central armed police forces were uh, deployed, have been deployed. Uh, similarly, around uh, 64 companies have been deployed in um, uh, Alipur Duar. So there is, uh, you know, extensive deployment of forces. That could be also another reason why we are seeing less violence this time. <clears throat> and as far as far as Mamta Banerjee's uh, remark on Ram Namami, um, even in case of Ram Namami, if, if you compare to the last years, last year there were um, uh, you know riots in uh, Howrah and other pl places, but this time, barring a stray incident in um, uh, this thing, Murshidabad there was no violence and this this is because even the tmc we have seen participating in ramnamami processions and all these things so in a, in a way in a way it's an ideological victory of the hindutva force when tmc declaring you know for the first time the state government has declared a state holiday on ramnamami and then the tmc leaders they overwhelmingly participated in the ramnamami procession Right. So this, is a, new trend, uh, this is a new trend in Bengal politics. Right. But uh, tell me one thing. I mean, look, uh, I was just looking at few opinions, uh, uh, polls, which uh, which had come uh, two days ago. Uh, say, for example, India TV CNX uh, <clears throat> opinion poll, which said that in West Bengal, BJP might win more seats than Trinamool Congress. Do you see a scenario evolving? Though I know it's quite early, it's just the first phase. But uh, do you see a scenario like that where BJP could surpass Trinamool Congress? 
very unlikely. See, now in the first two phases, the polling will be, are taking place in BJP stronghold. In North Bengal, BJP did extremely well last time, winning eight of the this thing, seven of the eight seats in that block. So, and even in uh, assembly elections in 2021, when um, uh, TMC virtually swept throughout the state, but in North Bengal, out of 54 seats, um, you know, BJP won 37 seats, which will be roughly 49 or 50%, uh, 48%. It's a stronghold of BJP. So in, in these two phases, yes, BJP might do well, but even in North Bengal, BJP is facing some uh, this thing, um, some reverses, uh, particularly from ethnic groups. Uh, say, uh, for instance, Gorkhas. Gorkhas are, are this time very upset with the BJP because since 2009, they have been uh, electing BJP MPs with the hope that uh, you know their Gorkha land demands would be fulfilled, some permanent solution to the Gorkha issues and all these things, then nothing happened. Then to the coach Radbangshis uh, ahead of 2019 uh, parliamentary elections, Amit Shah had uh, assured them that uh, one um, uh, Radbangshi battalion will be um, created within the central armed police forces. But that has not uh, that promise has not yet been fulfilled. So Rajbangshis are also upset. Now and then they also flirt with this idea of creating separate state um, comprising uh, these northern districts of West Bengal. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> this uh, just uh, remains an election for, uh, promises. And if you see what is happening today in Nagaland, this six district is also the same uh, outcome of the similar promises uh, BJP made, and then uh, they conveniently, you know, forgot then about that. And, and uh, as a result, uh, today Nagaland is uh, seeing boycotts in six uh, districts. Total boycott. Not a single vote was cast there because in uh, this uh, de this demand of separate statehood comprising six districts of Nagaland, <coughs> the BJP first, you know, gave um, fuel this demand. When uh, Nitin Gadkari was BJP president, he went into to Nagaland in 2012 and uh, told these uh, tribes that, you know, you people are uh, underdeveloped and all these things. So um, if BJP comes to power, we'll create a separate state for you. But uh, since 2000, it was the promise was made 12 years ago in 2012. But uh, <clears throat> since then, nothing has happened. Only uh, before elections, they BJP take up this issue and give make fresh promises, and then they conveniently forget after elections. And as a result, people are now on the street. They are uh, they have boycotted elections. So <clears throat> in way, similar situations is have similar backlash. BJP is also facing in certain pockets in um, West Bengal, particularly from the ethnic groups. Right. You were talking about the dominance of local issues. Puneet, I'll come to you now because I was looking at uh, uh, the constituency of Pili Bheet, where dozens of villagers have boycotted today. Uh, there are reports of boycott coming from Tamil Nadu as well. I'll come to Srini sir a little later. But uh, talking about the scenario in Uttar Pradesh, uh, what does it look like? And uh, there were reports that, you know, people were going door to door, and especially the people from the Thakur community going and saying that this time it's all about saving Yogi Adityanath. Looking at what has happened to Vasundra in Rajasthan, looking at what has happened to Manohar Lal Khattar in Haryana. Uh, is it true that people have really gone out and uh, asked people to vote against BJP, especially the people from the Thakur community? The Rajputs, it seems, also have turned against uh, BJP. There were reports that the Kshatriyas have also turned against BJP. So all these uh, caste combinations seem to have gone horribly wrong, at least seemingly it, it does so. So what is the real picture in Uttar Pradesh? What does it look like? Uh, well, thanks, Nilu. So as far as UP is concerned, uh, you see, the, the seats that are going to polls today are seats from the western part of UP. And uh, uh, what you're saying is is right. I mean, there there, there have there has been a lot of unrest among uh, you know various sections that have been supportive of the BJP in this belt, uh, and which is now in a state of disaffection 
against uh, you know uh, against the bjp i wouldn't say against modi but against the bjp as a party in certain constituencies against the incumbent mp uh, but having said that uh, i don't know how much of that actually translates into an anti bjp vote uh, i i would certainly agree that the bjp doesn't look as comfortable in these seats as it was in 2019 or in 2014 uh, you also have to look at the kind uh, you know what are the constituencies that are going to pull pilibhit of course is one and pilibhit uh, you know aside from the this whole issue of uh, shatriya or rajput or thakur anger against the bjp which uh, the factors are different but you'll see that happening in rajasthan to some extent you're seeing that happening in gujarat you're seeing that happening in up uh, the, the reasons in each of these states are different uh, uh, in certain places it's a combination of factors but you know whether it's purushottam ropala's statement uh, in gujarat against the rajput community or the denial of tickets to uh, you know uh, rajputs in up or uh, you know in uh, in rajasthan uh, the whole you know the sort of uh, ripple effect of the gujarat thing because of the karni sena uh, agitation there is anger but then you look at these at least in the first phase because uh, i would not want to to uh, you know juxtapose and to to kind of extrapolate what's happening in this phase to what is going to happen in the remaining phases uh up is a huge state it's got 80 seats uh the uh, you know the, the the current phase only has seven of those seats polling so it will be extremely uh, you know uh, unfair and wrong to say that what's happening in this phase is going to continue in the remaining phases of up but you look at the constituencies here uh you have kerana you have muzaffarnagar you've got pilibhit you've got rampur muradabad bijnor now this is uh, this is the belt where uh, ideally the india alliance uh, this uh, and of course you've got saranpur so you you should have had the india alliance the congress and the samajwadi party very very comfortable in these seats i would not say that is the situation as of now in these segments barring a couple of seats so i i think that the that the samajwadi party candidate in kairana ikra hasan is uh, is definitely uh, putting up she's put up a very very good fight uh, uh, a lot of people say that she's within striking distance of winning the seat uh, again there are multiple factors for it it's it's been a stronghold of the family her father uh, chadri munawar hasan Uh, was a was a stalwart leader from uh, Kerala. Her mother had been an MP. Uh, her bra- her you know the way her family has been persecuted by the BJP government and particularly by Adityanath uh, has been a factor. And she has herself run a very very o- well oiled campaign in Kerala. Uh, Muzaffar Nagar again, you're seeing a very solid campaign from the Samajwadi Party, uh, although it. you know took off on a very uh, shaky leg but uh, it kind of gained momentum eventually and uh, and this is the constituency which you know was known for the, the muzaffarnagar riots and uh, so there is a certain kind of polarization at play there uh, and a counter polarization also uh, pili beat you you're seeing uh, you know again an interesting fight because uh, varun gandhi has been denied a ticket the sitting mp uh and jitin prasada who's not exactly from uh pilibhit nor is a political heavyweight uh has been fielded and he's he's largely contesting on the name of narendra modi and you know the the, the hopes of uh, a bjp you know ground swell uh, a ground ground swell for the bjp but then you look at rampur and muradabad two of the strongest uh constituencies ideally for uh, the samajwadi party and they made a complete mess of both these seats in the candidate selection process mm-hmm. and uh, you know rampur uh, 
they they fielded a candidate who's barely known in the constituency they they simply see it seems that they would simply want to ride on the fact that the candidate is a muslim uh but you know uh, molana mohibullah who the dsp has fielded uh except for the fact that he was born in a village in swar which is part of the muradabad uh, of the rampur constituency he has no real connection he's he's a cleric of a mosque in delhi he was practically flown in even to file his nomination uh, you know uh, and nobody close to the leader from rampur for for sp which is azam khan who is currently in jail nobody from his camp has been given a ticket so and uh, and azam khan hasn't even sent out an appeal for votes for the sp or for uh, mohibullah you know uh, for, uh, in rampur which is certainly not a good picture for the samajwadi party and similarly in ram in in muradabad where uh, you know the sp had an incumbent mp in st hasan was fairly popular and it's a constituency that has roughly 40% muslim votes uh because of pressure again from uh, azam khan who reportedly did not want st hasan fielded the uh, samajwadi party brought in ruchi veera who's a one term former mla from bijnor you know uh and she's been fielded here you look at the nagina constituency again a constituency that the sp should have done fairly well considering that it's a constituency that has a very good mix of uh, uh, and a formidable mix of the dalits of the obcs and the muslims uh, and and because you hardly see mayawati uh, involved in the campaign as she used to be in the past uh, and there has been a constant decline in her party's fortunes uh, the 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 uh, you know people in her stronghold have been looking for an alternative leadership and the sp could have provided that but in in nagina uh, after having initial talks with chandrashekhar azad of uh, chandrashekhar ravan of uh, the uh, azad samaj party and uh, because i spoke to uh, chandrashekhar some time back and he he told me you know that you know, he, he had been assured of a ticket uh, of uh, an alliance he wanted four seats the sp finally said that we'll give you two seats he said okay he is fine with two seats and then the sp uh, did not even bother to inform him that the alliance isn't happening and they straight away fielded a candidate against him in nagina so there's going to be a, a fracture of the uh, you know the votes that there that the india group could have consolidated in nagina right. so there are right. all of these factors so it's I, i would still say it's not a very comfortable fight for the bjp in these seats but at the same time it's also uh, for the india alliance you know these are also seats where the india alliance has kind of mucked up their show right uh, uh, purely taking a cue from what you've said puneet i'll come to rajlakshmi now uh, she's been waiting for quite some time rajlakshmi now what does the picture look like if puneet is saying that you know in, in up especially i'll come to madhya pradesh a little later uh, apneet have been traveling also that side so what i want to ask you is that have the local issues really dominated this uh, lok sabha elections and probably that uh, was a deliberate strategy on the part of the india alliance to localize the election as much as it can and uh, that that would be to some kind of a disadvantage for bjp see when you say you know local issues they they pertain you know primarily to the uh, to you know the candidates right to the image of the candidates all right so uh, so so as far as the the uh, the uh, the localness you know the issues is concerned it pertains to to uh, to that you know alone you know i think you know and also the selection of the candidate the candidates uh, you know if the candidate has been uh, has been seen by the people if the candidate has been active among people okay uh, and if the candidate has got a general uh, generally good you know public public disposition you see so so it so happens that if there are two candidates of the same caste right so so you have a jat uh, uh, fighting a jat or or you have a rajput fighting a rajput then uh, huh, and if there is no other third candidate okay so then you know what is the uh, uh, what would be you know the determining factor okay then they would say then then people say that it is you know the behavior of the candidate you know okay then the then the actual the access the, the access that the candidate has 
the uh, the the kind of uh, you know the kind of interpersonal relationship the candidate cultivates you know amongst the electorate so all these things uh, they they add up to those uh, to those factors right but but i think in these elections there have been overarching issues also for instance this uh, the entire you know misuse of central agencies and uh, and the arrests of sitting chief ministers because i i think even if the electorate does not articulate these things openly of course one has to sit with them spend some time you know and uh, and sort of slowly sort of nudge these things out because it doesn't happen you know in world world uh, uh, in world world uh, electoral tours you know one has to sit and spend time with people and and it takes time but but uh, but in my own experience of course in you know, a limited experience of traveling in rajasthan uh, of course anil would also sort of corroborate these things i mean uh, voters do sort of open up you know and they do express these anxieties and uh, and again among uh, these uh, these anxieties are also the anxiety of my right so rajalakshmi yeah. which which means what you're saying which means yeah. that arvind kejriwal's arrest hemant sorens arrest has some kind of a resonance on the ground and people yes, do it has a, sympathy it has it has and 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 i think the india block has to uh, uh, has you know to a significant extent it has been able to convey these anxieties among among the people yes you know, people may not understand the the uh, the intricacies you know of the constitution or of uh, uh, or of abstract terms you know like uh, like democracy right but then if it is uh, if uh, if it is translated and explained uh, and uh, you know in such terms that how the central agencies have been sort of misused by this government how uh, how the uh, how the constitution can be changed uh, to the extent that that tomorrow certain groups you know uh, might be taken out of the reserved categories right so so uh, of course that may or may not happen but then but, but then it's but then the constitution sort of changing Uh, and uh, and again in concrete terms you know as to what it would mean right i mean it takes time to sort of correlate these issues but but again for instance there are immediate issues you know like uh, i mean like price rise is a thing that stares at people you know uh, say on a day to day basis okay so they say that yes this government has given us uh, some extra uh, what were kilograms of food grains but on the other hand it has increased uh, increase of prices of so many other items so so you give with one hand and then you take with the other so uh, they say it comes to not you know ultimately so these are the kind of anxieties that are there you know and again you know unemployment is there they say that there is actually there are actually no jobs you know going around you know jobs that we might say stable and secure jobs which which in fact give you also offer you some kind of social security so these anxieties are there you know and they do uh, and to an extent the india block alliance has articulated uh, has articulated those anxieties and in several states they have been seat sharing arrangements maybe in up it did not really work to out to the extent it should have but uh, but 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 on the whole uh, this whole anger among the rajputs you know whether whether they feel that they have been short shifted you know in terms of uh, sort of giving tickets you know this happened in rajasthan also so they feel that they've been given fewer tickets uh, and again mr rupala's statements you know uh, i mean i mean it seems that they're still very upset about the kind of statements he made uh, so uh, so yes it will uh, it will have a it will have its impact you know where uh, where the contests are very keen uh, and where uh, they it can it can uh, it can sort of flip the uh, outcome you know in a different direction altogether but but right. i think uh, i think these elections are about issues i mean i'm not going to say that they're not about issues yes the bjp uh, I, i think the bjp knows that this election is about issues that is why it keeps on coming you know to the ram temple issue and it says that you know the opposition parties do not respect uh, so the what, is, me, what is yeah. your feeling so you'll have to give the credit to the opposition for making this uh, election all about mudda versus modi have they succeeded in that yes it has it has uh, i mean i think it has you know managed to to change you know the narrative to to a large extent and uh, uh, and that is why you know the rallies you know the road shows of uh, of the you know the bjp have been you know concentrated on the seats which are considered weak for the bjp for instance you know the the, the first rally in rajasthan was in sikar you know where the cpm candidate is standing you know who is uh, i mean i mean who is a representative of the india alliance bloc right so so here so i think uh, i think there is a strong sense of unease in the uh, among the bjp and its allies that their promises really haven't sort of cut you know much ice with the people and that people are questioning that how come uh, it is this party which uh, which received so much money okay through electoral bonds i mean again you know it's uh, again as an election issue it may not uh, it may not be uh, 
be the basis on which you know people might vote but that there has been corruption happening you know here also in this party which calls itself dud ka dhula which 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 said that nahi khaunga aur khane nahi dunga and all that so all those contradictions you know have come to the fore so so i think there is this fear of also sort of openly expressing those anxieties because of the fact that they see chief minister has been thrown behind behind bars they feel with the aam aadmi ka kya hoga you know it's like that so uh, so so i think that the india of uh, india bloc has has got its act together yes it may not be the perfect you know a perfect model of an alternate uh, uh, you know uh, uh, alternative but i think they have been able to uh, able to convey to the people that 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 if you're going to really like this combination i mean uh, there are several consequences that might happen you know and uh, and and again as i said you know uh, uh, if it juxtaposed with the lived realities of people of uh, of mangai of unemployment of of not having stable jobs of not really uh, having stable futures uh, so all these things you know coupled with this uh, have and you know and then it's the and there are the smartphone you know people are constantly watching videos in fact uh, in fact nilu it's quite startling that there been so many clashes on ground you know uh, almost in uh, almost in several states you know which have gone to polls now now why would it be you know unless unless the india uh, uh, india block alliance uh, workers are on ground you know and ensuring that their people are voting you know clashes occur only where there is some some amount of you know, competitiveness right so uh, if it was you know, ek tarfa or just one side it, it, it perhaps might not have happened you know exactly No, but this uh, brings me to the question, Shrini sir. I'll come to you. So, what happens uh, to all the cards which BJP normally and conventionally plays out? The Rashtravad, the Ram Mandir, of course. Uh, they did try and uh, make it into a big political issue till day before yesterday. The uh, Prime Minister was talking about the Surya Tilak and all of that. But uh, which card of BJP do you think is really going to succeed? There are, where is the Rashtravad? Where is the communal card? Where is the Hindutva politics? Uh, is it somewhere waning in 2024 and even they have realized that probably the shelf life of these issues is very very limited and it probably won't work yeah um uh, nilu i'll come to that before that i just uh, quickly let me answer the, the question which you raised earlier about uh, uh, you know what's happening locally uh, in tamil nadu there are certain protests which are happening and these are very yes. local protests and i thought this is a trend which is worth uh, taking note it's and it's happening in several parts of india there was an airport which was uh, a greenfield airport which the state government wanted to develop called a place called parandur and there the farmers have been protesting it's almost uh, uh, you know you can compare it with fa- what farmers are doing in delhi for a while now and then here also such a protest is happening and the state government is taking no note of that so the people were very angry and they decided to boycott the officers are going there and trying to you know kind of convince them that you must at least vote the other one is uh, again an issue which is very significant uh, there is a vengavale is a place where uh, uh, it's in pudukote district which where um, you know the, the charge was that they found actually human feces inside uh, a water tank and the water is supplied to scheduled caste uh, neighborhood the people are very unhappy over that uh, there was a pro ordered and uh, it has uh, reached nowhere there's no progress though so these are kind of issues and there are other local issues i'm just highlighting these issues because the voters perhaps where they feel that they have no alternative or uh, they no alternate or they they just resorting to this kind of protest in the whole village Uh, has uh, said that they won't vote and the fishermen there are some couples of fishermen on play where they are protesting now coming to your other question about um, what is the impact of uh, nationalism or uh, hindutva is a overarching theme which is developing around the country uh, i think it's interesting um, this question is interesting as far as south is concerned it has had no impact uh at least uh, when i mean south uh, uh, right now i can't generalize the whole of south uh, i can only talk right now of tamil nadu which is uh, you know has gone through the first phase here it had had no impact uh, both nationalism or hindutva and even bjp knows about it and therefore they never try to raise it as an issue but even then in at least one public meeting did uh, the prime minister did raise this issue of uh, you know shakti that women power which is uh, which became a controversy in the north and 
nothing much happened one other reason is even when he passionately raises the issue in case he wants to people don't understand because it gets lost in translation and the language is a big barrier here half the time they don't get uh, what he's saying uh, so uh, it's very difficult to get into one nuances the communication is certainly a problem for bjp here in the uh, in tamil nadu because it, it all gets translated very poorly and sometimes they don't get it what's happening so and even otherwise the people here don't respond to such issues so i mean i may sound repetitive many other analysts might have said this one important factor is the uh, you know the the education levels and uh, and the awareness levels of awareness people don't move on such issues they move more on basic issues um obviously the uh, petrol price hike is an issue the price rise of essential commodities an issue they do talk about these issues uh, because it it uh, hits them on a day to day basis they do do mention such issues um the other notorious thing which happens in tamil nadu which, which is notorious for is the the money factor you know during elections i mean one of the i mean we all must remember that in the first phase itself the election commission has seized one of the biggest haul of uh, cash and drug all over the country uh, which is you know uh, which if you compare it to 2019 it was only 10% of what have <laughs> seized in the first phase itself yes imagine so much <coughs> of uh, money is floating around and uh, in tamil nadu also it had its fair share of about 430 crores so these are uh, things here but I feel the issue of nationalism. Modi ji is uh, Prime Minister Modi ji is did. I mean, he is raising those issues in various ways. You can't say he hasn't. He has spoken about it in various meetings in various forms. If you look at his speeches, uh, he has spoken in uh, various meetings, and he has uh, you know uh, talked about these issues. Uh, um, I mean, I don't need to repeat it. Most of you uh, closely track. uh his speeches but he has been regularly saying um issues uh, uh, raising hindutva issues in 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 some other other form you know even while the election uh, process is on we had ram navmi and uh, he did mention uh, uh you know the the fact that um um ram navmi celebrations he did say pause and took a cell phone out and said everybody must celebrate he did raise this issue of you know the the look at uh, the way he reacted to the congress manifesto um you know so so the, so he he's been saying this issue saying these things so i'm sure uh, when the election moves uh, to you know the next subsequent phases you may see a, a you know a rise in tempo there uh, since it's only a first phase it's too early to call whether this is an issue or not uh but he he certainly this bjp would raise this issue because uh on the other hand you have real issues which need to be tackled uh which is which many of our uh, uh, co panelists have already outlined which is unemployment which is price rise i mean the human uh, i mean day to day uh, uh, issues which people face Uh, those those issues are there and uh, they they're certainly pinching uh, every every common man and they're also uh, like uh, i think uh, raj lakshmi said that you know it it certainly concerns people but they may not be articulating uh, yes. arrest of a major leader here a cm here a cm there um the entire uh, the articulation of washing machine is an issue where enforcement agencies are proactive i mean these issues do uh, come up so, so elections are not one uh, single it's not fought on one single issue so uh, exactly. when they say uh, one of the issues the, the way nationalism is brought about to is to say that you know there are two wars happening right now in the world and uh, most uh, nations are feeling kind of insecure but then if we have a very powerful leader Uh, this uh, country will be taken care of the, the economy that we are you know now fifth uh, largest and uh, you know the studies are suggesting that in uh, by 74 will be the second largest uh, biggest economy in the world 
things like this this these issues do um, affect uh, you know people at least the middle class um, do uh, look at these issues so you have to segregate the middle class certainly um, you know looks at more favorably whereas uh, the others uh, you know for them bread and butter is a bigger issue Absolutely. so i think this will further these issues will further pan out as we progress further into election this is only a first phase and it has started uh, with a major contribution of 40 seats from tamil nadu and other 120 seats scattered all over and therefore to draw a you know a common big picture at this stage is slightly difficult that's what i think Absolutely. But one quick word, uh, Puneet, from you, because uh, uh, Shirisa was just talking about this washing machine culture. But how important is the electoral bond issue? We just completely missed out in this conversation, though I was thinking of discussing uh, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar as well. But then uh, I guess uh, we can do it in the subsequent episodes of Capital Beat when we do it. But how big uh, do you think is... Uh, is, is the electoral bond issue on the ground because the opposition parties all said and done haven't raised this issue uh, the way they should have. And people have been saying that, you know, they have been equal beneficiaries and probably that is the reason, except for Rahul Gandhi, apparently there's been no noise, I mean, uh, on, on that. Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try and uh, put in a bit of MP and Bihar uh, in, into this because uh, at least you know when once when was traveling in uh, in MP and and I traveled to uh, you know a lot of small villages uh, and I do not see like Rajalakshmi was was saying that there is of course an impression a perception of corruption having happened through electoral bonds and the BJP making you know thousands of crores because of that. But I do not, uh, I did, at least in my uh, understanding, I, I did not feel that it was a determinant of how uh, the people would vote. And uh, I, I think that there is a certain level of anger that one could sense uh, in the people on issues of unemployment, on issues of, uh, you know, of course, uh, no two states uh, will have an electorate that reacts, you know, in a similar way. Uh, I mean, forget two states, even two constituencies may not have an electorate that's reacting to issues the same way. But but uh, you did have a lot of anger uh, on issues of unemployment, of price rise, uh, even examination paper leaks, uh, the uh, and uh, you know in, in a lot of the areas where you have uh, a significant population of uh, Dalits, the the issue of uh, the constitution and whether you know if if these people come back to power, uh, you know this whole narrative of changing the constitution, whether that will actually become true. Uh, now, uh, in, at least in Madhya Pradesh, having said that, that you know, you have a, a very palpable anger, you know, almost as so palpable on issues of unemployment, particularly that you can, you know, quite literally cut it with a knife. It's it's that kind of anger that you see among the people. But having said that, at least in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, I don't know what are the reasons, what are the factors behind it, but they, they're still willing to give Modi another chance. Barring a couple of seats where you're seeing a good contest, but again, primarily not because of the parties or because of the issues, but the candidates who are in the fray. Uh, Bihar, the current phase, of course, uh, see, uh, you similar issues of uh, of constitution of unemployment, etc., have been raised very effectively in Bihar by Tejashwi uh, and, you know, members of his party, but particularly by Tejashwi. Uh, but at least in the first phase, I would not want to hazard a guess of what uh, Bihar, you know, what kind of narrative is gaining ground, because there are four constituencies going to polls in this phase in Bihar. Two of them are uh, constituencies uh, where 
you know, NBA allies are contesting. You have uh, Chirag Paswan's brother-in-law contesting from Jamui. Uh, and you have Jitan Ram Maji contesting from Gaya. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> and, and the factors there are different. And these are both, uh, you know, uh, Dalit Reserve constituencies. So you, you do have a certain, <laughs> from, you know, uh, the, the interactions I've had with people there, uh, there is definitely a lot of anger uh, on issues of on uh, like I mentioned uh, unemployment and constitution, but also at the same time there are local factors there. You know Nitish's Paltu Ram image, uh, Jitan Ram Manji not being able to work uh, with Nitish Kumar, uh, problems within Chirag Paswan's own party, the split in his party, all of that, uh, which has kind of given a certain buoyancy to uh, you know the the India bloc there, uh, coupled with. Uh, the efforts that Tejashvi has put in, but then you also have uh, you know other factors where the the India bloc in Bihar is a little shaky because of the way uh, uh, you know certain constituencies the seat sharing uh, pact has been done. So, like in this phase, you have the Aurangabad constituency going to polls, which uh, was traditionally a Congress stronghold, and despite the Congress making a very uh, you know uh, I mean literally pleading the RJD to give. Aurangabad to them, the, the, R, the RJD simply refused and said that, no, we're, we're going to field our own candidate here. So uh, I don't know how much of that is going to impact uh, polling and, you know, the choice that the, the voters make, but th there are lapses there too. Uh, but uh, but uh, again, I, I just one quick line, Madhya Pradesh, I... I do think that, you know, while this whole Ram Mandir and, uh, you know, this Hindutva thing and all that, uh, it's not uniformly influencing voters uh, across even the Hindi belt, but at least in Madhya Pradesh, it's a huge factor for the BJP. It's something that the RSS, the BJP, uh, their affiliates have gone village to village, door to door, uh, and of course, with us, uh, I'm sorry to, you know, like for the lack of a better word, uh, uh, with a blind election commission, uh, you know, refusing to act, you've actually got hoardings put up wherever I traveled in Madhya Pradesh. I mean, you had literally hoardings put up, Sojanya say BJP, which is like by BJP or some organization of the Sangh Parivar, talking about Ram ko lai hain, unko lana hai. Hmm. Aur 500 saal ka gulami and, you know, those kind of things. Poll hoardings. And the rules say that you can't use religion to ask for votes. And uh, uh, I'm told that the Congress has been filing, uh, at least in Madhya Pradesh, they filed about a dozen complaints with the EC with regard specifically to these posters. And the EC hasn't done anything. Uh, and uh, as I said, it is a major factor in MP. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, it's a factor everywhere in the Hindi belt, right. but at least in Madhya Pradesh, uh, this and communal polarization remain very major factors that are still right. giving some benefit to the region. But uh, one quick word and then I'll wind up the show because it's getting too long now. Uh, uh, what about Chindwara? It, it remains a battle of prestige. Uh, what are the chances that BJP might be able to breach uh, Chindwara? They've pooled in a lot of resources over there uh, with all the central machinery also having flown down to Chindwara at the moment. Well, I would certainly say Chindwara is not going to be a very comfortable con contest for uh, Kamal Nath's son yeah. uh, this time around. Uh, there is, uh, of course, a lot of people have said that no, but the Congress, even in uh, 23, though the Congress lost uh, the state, they did very well in Chindwara. But there's a major distinction there, which needs to be made, is that in 23, when the elections were happening, a lot of voters in Chinwara actually thought that the Congress is coming to power and Kamal Nath is going to return as chief minister. And that played a major role in the Congress sweeping the Chinwara district. Uh, this time around, that's not the case. Plus, a major factor has been the defections, plus the whole rumor that went around in January, which Kamal Nath never really effectively countered. Uh, about him and Nakul shifting to the BJP. They did not go to the BJP eventually, but uh, I think just that rumor has done them a lot of damage. And uh, plus, the, the person contesting from Chinwara against uh, Nakul Nath 
the BJP candidate Vivek Banti Sahu is someone who's been working in Chinwada on the ground for the last 10 years. He's contested against Kamal Nath, he's contested against Nakul Nath, and he's again in the fray. And uh, and he's done a lot of gra uh, you know grassroots work there. Plus, of course, you have all the resource mobilization from the BJP. Uh, and I mean, uh, ironically, one would say that uh, because of the kind of focus that the BJP has put on Chinwada, their prospects in certain other seats of Madhya Pradesh uh, may uh, may be damaged a bit because you know you had this over concentration on the Chinwada seat that you know you started ignoring some other seats partly because of their own hubris uh, partly because uh, of other factors you know uh, the, the popularity of the candidate etc but having said all of that i mean Chinwada isn't a very comfortable contest this time uh, nakulnath had won by a margin of about a lakh of votes uh, uh, last time round i would be extremely surprised if he manages to win that seat even by half that margin this time so from this uh, a little more than an hour's discussion, at least the picture looks like that it's not going to be an easy election for BJP and it's, it isn't e easy for the India Alliance as well. But how does it shape up? It's too early to predict anything as of now because the first phase has just got over. The second phase is on April 26th. So we'll have to wait and watch all what happens. We'll have to follow the campaign. But who knows? But till now, as what we can say for sure is that there is no X factor, there is no big narrative on either side, whether it's the India Alliance or whether it is the BJP. So we'll have to wait and watch how things unfold. Thank you so much, uh, Shini, sir, for bearing uh, with all of us for like one hour, more than that, in fact. Thank you, Puneet. Samir, uh, Raj Lakshmi, it was wonderful Thank having you. you on the program. And one appeal to the viewers who are watching this discussion, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback, and stay tuned to the bedroom. Thank you. Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more news and updates.